A few days ago, it was announced that Doctor Strange is now being planned for the future of what I call the Avengerverse movies. This has been rumored for quite some time, and the last I had heard was that he was planned to be used as an assistant to Jane Foster in Thor The Dark World. I should mention now that Doctor Strange is my favorite Marvel superhero. Sure, I have more X-Men books than anything else, but that's only because more X-Men books exist. I have a limited number of Doctor Strange trades because there just aren't that many that exist. Without going on too much of a rant of why I love this character, I will just say that I really do think he's awesome. And the news that he is going to be used in the sprawling Avengerverse does not make me happy. In fact, I'm very angry. I was not pleased with the idea of trying to demote Strange to an assistant to a character I don't even care about at all and to shoehorn him into a film for another character that I don't care about at all. I don't really know if that's what these guys are doing since filming on the Dark World has already began and I think we would have heard something about Strange being in the film if he was going to be. So why am I so upset about Strange being roped into the Avengerverse? Even if they don't go the nonsense route of him working for Jane Foster, I'm still pretty peeved. And the reason is, to me, pretty obvious, but I am clearly one of the only people who thinks this way. It will take me a little bit of time to explain why I don't want to make babies with the Avengers like everyone else, but it all really comes down to these films feeling like they are made on an assembly line. The first Iron Man film, while I don't consider it to be one of the greatest superhero movies like I've heard it labeled, it is a great film. Jon Favreau was known for his comedic and, compared to Iron Man, lower budget films. He brought that kinda sorta indie sensibility to the movie, and that absolutely worked in his favor. The next film in this universe, The Incredible Hulk, is definitely a step down, but I actually enjoy it more than I do Iron Man. It certainly is very forgettable, but I hold it so dear to my heart because it is an improvement in almost every way to the previous Hulk film. Actors like Norton and Hurt are much more faithful to the characters they are playing, and even though I'm not a very knowledgeable Hulk fan, I felt this movie really captured what the comic is known for, and did a great job of including lots of little bits from the Hulk comics like the hint of the leader to come. Then we got Iron Man 2 which I think goes without saying is the worst film this shared universe has given us so far. My thoughts on Iron Man 2 really merit an entire video, so I won't go into why I hate that film so much here. But it was when I saw Iron Man 2 that I realized I was not enjoying the direction these movies were heading in. Now that we've seen several of these movies that are all supposed to be connected and lead into each other, it's become apparent, to me at least, that this is not the case. While they want you to think that Iron Man 2 leads into Thor, which leads into the Avengers, these movies are really not that connected at all. Tony Stark tells Thunderbolt Ross that he's putting together a team. And why is he telling Ross this? Presumably, because this team will be used to hunt down the Hulk. Along comes the Avengers movie, and this is entirely ignored. Nick Fury tells Tony Stark in the first Iron Man film that there is a thing called the Avengers Initiative. Iron Man 2 reveals that Tony most certainly will not be playing in the Avengers sandbox, except when he will be, which is in the Avengers film. The Thor movie acts like Thor is trapped in Asgard and it's a very serious thing and he will be trapped there for a very long, long time, and this is just magicked away by a throwaway line that I actually missed when watching the Avengers movie. This kind of thing isn't just fanboy whining. These are some pretty serious plot problems. If you are watching a film like The Lord of the Rings and a character mentions something that is given quite a bit of weight by the line delivery and the placement in the film, it wouldn't be considered frivolous if you complained about it whenever they decided to ignore it in the later films. I feel like this is the same scenario. These movies are all being treated like they are part of a large puzzle, but what we really have is a puzzle where none of the pieces actually fit together but everyone looking at the puzzle is pretending like these pieces form some grand piece of magnificent art. I feel like the easiest way to tackle these problems is something that cannot physically be done, but honestly, if I had my way, I'd not do a large shared universe. Part of what keeps me trapped in the X-Men franchise is that the X-Men comics rarely spill over into the rest of the Marvel Universe, with the notable exceptions. I don't have to read the latest issue of Captain America in order to understand what the heck is happening in Uncanny X-Men. 
This is a large problem in any shared universe, whether it is in print or in some other media. I am largely skeptical about the DC New 52, for example, for this same reason. I read one trade paperback of Animal Man, and already they are hinting at a crossover with Swamp Thing. What if I don't have any interest in Swamp Thing? Then I either drop Animal Man, or I read a book I don't care about. Five years ago, this would not have been a problem in superhero movies. If I only liked Batman, then I don't have to feel obligated to watch Green Lantern or Superman Returns in order to feel secure that I have seen everything I need to see in order to really, air quotes, get the plot of the next Batman movie. Now, the people behind the Avengerverse movies are treating these films just like the people behind the comics are treating the comics. If I don't care about Thor, that's just tough cookies, because I need to watch Thor in order to really grasp Loki and his gripe with Thor, the character, if I want to watch the Avengers movie. If the Avengers verse just wasn't a thing, then none of this would matter. You wouldn't have Tony Stark saying that the Avengers will hunt down the Hulk, and then Joss Whedon deciding that he doesn't care about that. Ever since the Avengers came out, we've been getting steady announcements about what we might expect in a Justice League movie, and most of what we've heard has been pretty inconsistent and contradicted previous announcements. But the announcement I liked the most was the idea that a Justice League film would be part of its own world and that Warner Brothers would not be doing a shared universe like Marvel has done. So Henry Cavill would play Superman in a Man of Steel movie and any sequels that followed, but if Superman showed up in the Justice League film, he would be played by a different actor, and so forth. And maybe this would not have worked with the Avengers. It would have most definitely been a disaster if someone tried to do an Avengers movie introducing all of the players in a two-hour film. The Avengers definitely had a leg up on what a hypothetical JLA film might do in that even casual moviegoers can go to the Avengers film and they don't need a long introduction to Iron Man. They had that in the two previous films. So it's a safe bet that throwing away the shared universe aspect of the Avengers verse wouldn't really work at all. So that brings me to my second suggestion. Let the directors make the movies they want to make. A little while back, Tim Daly from Wings, and also the voice of Superman from the animated series of the 1990s, he said that he felt like the recent flux of superhero movies felt like they were made by people who study and make pie charts in boardrooms. And I absolutely agree with Daly. Most of the movies in this Avengers verse have felt like they were micromanaged from above by some suit who thinks he knows better. Allegedly, Joss Whedon didn't want to have Agent Coulson die in the Avengers film, but was told by Kevin Feige that someone had to die. This is not the way a movie should be made. Certainly, a producer has some say in what goes into a movie since he is, you know, producing the film. If he puts money into a project, he needs to know that it is a project he can believe in. Nobody wants to fund what they think will be crap, and so you have producers who might be more heavily involved than screenwriters or directors would like. But the director is also important. Maybe one of the most important parts of making a film. Before I go further, yes, I believe that everyone involved in a film is important. The screenwriter is invaluable in how they craft the dialogue, and quite often, plot problems fall at their feet, unless heavy editing was done on what was a decent script. The actors are extremely important, as you can start with a great script and give it to a terrible actor who will turn it into a terrible film. Jumper, Hayden Christensen. But the director is where you get the tone. He can, and often does, make suggestions to alter the script based on necessities in real life. This may sound obvious, but he directs the actors. Some actors may feel like they don't need direction, but this would be very foolish to think this. In short, the director is important. And yes, I feel like the Avengerverse is treating the director as expendable as you might think that the coffee boy is. While he is not a director, Edward Norton did do some extensive rewrites to the script of the Incredible Hulk movie, and he wasn't credited. And then Marvel replaces him with Mark Ruffalo for, air quotes, creative differences. And then Kenneth Branagh backs out of Thor 2 for creative differences. And for the week that Patty Jenkins was set to direct Thor 2, she later backs out for creative differences. Jon Favreau backed out of Iron Man 3 for, you guessed it, creative differences. I keep getting this vibe that the suits at Marvel are more concerned with churning out a product rather than allowing the people who are actually involved in these movies to make quality artistic films. 
Every time an actor or a director is replaced, I imagine a car. If the tire is flat, you replace it with a new tire. But you don't grow attached to the tire or feel like it is important in how the car runs. You just get a new tire that works better than the one that you're replacing, and you forget about it. After Marvel replaces all of these very talented people, I feel like they would be more upset if they had to replace a tire on one of their cars. If an actor or director doesn't like what you are doing, just replace them and act like it's the exact same thing. Marvel is clearly more concerned with micromanaging every aspect of their new film universe, and if something as petty as a director's artistic vision gets in the way of that, then we can just get another director who will listen to everything we say. It's Marvel's way or the highway. This idea of letting directors actually, you know, direct, it wouldn't even have to get in the way of doing a shared universe of films. You just have to get Branagh, Whedon, and Favreau together and let them hash out what they are doing in their respective films. Oh, so Thor will be in the Avengers film, huh? Maybe I shouldn't banish him in the Thor film. Of course, there still needs to be some intervention when a director has a bad idea or gets too big for his britches. If and when the inevitable Avengers film fails hard, I can easily see Whedon throwing blame at everyone except for himself, like he did with Alien 4. But instead of having the entire production be led by nameless corporate drones, we should let someone who has a handle on story and how to make a film be heading up this entire enterprise. Some director who has a great love for these characters and movies. Maybe Joss Whedon, who would be perfect for that role, despite my not love for him. All in all, I am pretty sure that I still mostly stand alone on this. I know I've spoken to a couple of people who feel more or less the same way as I do, but the sales numbers definitely say otherwise. If you agree or disagree, I would love to hear what you have to say, either in the comments or in a video response. But since this is a topic that I imagine nobody listening to this will agree with, please try to keep any response civil. Heck, always try to be civil. On that note, I'll see you guys later with some other kind of video.